Hello. Uh, this tutorial is more like the geography of map tool, where different features and tools are located, not necessarily in depth about what they do. So starting off here, let's look at these tools that are right across the top. You start off with the interaction tools, which gives you these two options here. First your pointer tool, this is how you grab a hold of stuff and move it around. Move your tokens around, or if you switch layers, you can move your images around as well. Then you can resize your images and so forth using that as well. Just make sure you're in the right layer. You know, tokens are typically in the token layer, the object and background layer for your other images. Now, the one problem I see sometimes is right next to it here is your measurement tool, which is great for measuring distances across the map. But what sometimes people forget is then to switch back to your pointer tool so you can, you know, grab a hold of your other tokens and so forth. They have to remember to switch back so you can then interact again. Then moving across, next you have your drawing tool here, which gives you your different shapes and lines in your color palette. Then you have your template tool, which allows you to lay out different shapes for area of effect spells or effects or what have you. Fog is for remove when you have when you're using fog of war to either remove or add more fog of war back in, in different shapes. Right there, it's given you. And then here, the eye is the topology tool. What that is is a special layer where you draw in different shapes or lines that block vision. Actually it blocks vision and light. So if you're different light sources, these are you draw these in you know different walls and, and things along those lines. So those are the different tools that you have. And then if your campaign file has multiple maps within it, up here is where you click to see the list of the different maps that you have. Then moving up here to your file menu, this is some core stuff in your file menu. Obviously, you know, opening and saving your campaign files. If you do want to export a screenshot, it just has an image file. Here's where you can do that. Um, add to resource library, very important. That's your that's your image library. So that's how you get your images into Map Tool, so you can use them. And then starting and connecting to servers right here. Now over in the edit menu, a couple of very important things here. Campaign properties and preferences. First, in campaign properties. Now, token properties. Um, this is different properties that are contained within your tokens, and this is key to tracking a lot of information for your token. If you're going to do any sort of automation, this is where it's kept, and you can create a certain profile, export it, and then import it into other um, campaign files. Um, repositories I'll cover at a different time. A site is you can define, you know, specific custom types of site that you can give to different tokens. Light sources, you define certain types and shapes of light sources that you can give to different objects or tokens. States deal with, oh these are obvious, you know, little, it can be just little shapes like are here are actual images that define different states. You know, are you dead or did you take a lot of damage? Um, did you get entangled by a web spell? Something like that. You can have all those in here. Have little images and symbols pop up on your tokens that way. Bars are little trackers. So it can be like a health bar, it could be a, a magic bar where as you use up your magic points or as you get wounded, they can go down. So all of that stuff is located here under campaign properties, so remember that. The other important one is your preferences. Now this is mainly important because it can save you a lot of time. Most of these are self-explanatory. Um, a couple of them I'll we'll quick touch on here. Um, grid size. This is how many pixels per grid. Now, the larger the number, obviously the more detail that you'll have for your images and maps and the more you'll be able to zoom in. But if you're having people connecting remotely, that's also going to mean a larger file size and it'll take longer for that map to distribute. So people don't usually go smaller than 50. That's a, that's a decent number and um, you can zoom in okay. Um, some people go as high as 200 to get greater, greater detail. 100 is kind of a, a midpoint. The default units per cell is for measurement purposes. You know, does your system use, you know, five feet per square or two meters per hex? You put that number in here so you get accurate measuring. Okay, uh, and then over here, duplicate token numbering. You have two options. You have increment and random two digit random two digit. And what this is is, you know, you say you have a bunch of evil minions that you've tossed out there. You're probably just going to use the same token over and over again. So to differentiate between them, map tool automatically sticks a number after them. Now it can be incremental where you'll have, you know, goblin one, goblin two, goblin three, and so forth. Or it can randomly put two digits on there, you know, goblin sixty five, goblin thirty two. That way no one really knows how many are out there. And then, like I said, the rest of these are pretty self-explanatory. You can just experiment with them. You know, do you want your different objects you put out in your objects and background layers to snap to grid? You know, same with your tokens and so forth. And also, something I'm definitely going to point out is 
do want, like in the chat window, if so, when someone sends a message, do you hear a little beep? You can turn the sound off right here. Okay, so again, preferences, very important, save you a lot of time. Moving on to the map menu. Uh, this is everything to do with the map, really, the different features of the map. You want to make a new map, you click here, you make a new map. Do you want the map visible to players or not? Do you want fog of war on your map? Your vision settings. Oops, I just turned that off. No, I just put on fog of war. Okay, we'll take that off. Um, your vision settings. Do you have your vision, vision settings off? Do you, is it daylight where there's light everywhere? Um, you know, do you need, is it night where you need light sources? And you can adjust the size of your grid on the fly. You can rename your map on the fly. You know, the map menu is all about the map here. And then view is how you view certain things. So, um, show as player. Right now, show as player shows you kind of how the player is going to see the map. And zooming in and out. Um, grid. Actually, turn your grid on so you can see it. And then, you know, turn the grid back off. Under tools, here's some very important stuff for your, those of you who want to run a game. Um, uh, enforce players to current map. So if you switch maps, you want to make sure everyone gets to your new map. You click on this and everyone is forced to that map. You want players to see something, a certain view. Click, you know, center players in current view, and they're forced to that view. So if they're lost somewhere else on the map, you can get them, boom, right to where you want the action to be. Lock player movement, a very no another good one to remember. If players are moving around, and you want them to stop because something's happening. You lock player movement, and then they can't move anymore. And then moving down here to the Windows menu, these are you have many different windows and map tool. You know, for who's connected, for connections here to your actual your image library. So what do you want visible out? and what are you using. So you can just uncheck or check stuff. As you, When you first start out, they're all going to be out here. So you have to go through and uncheck certain ones you don't want. And you can you know, tack certain ones to the side like I have here and just call them out when you need them. But generally speaking, depending on how you run things, you're probably not going to have more than four or five out there as a GM and maybe only two or three as a player. And if you hit Restore Layout, it'll pop them all out there all at once for you. And lastly here, moving to the help menu, most of it's just your standard help stuff. Um, but two things to pay attention to is add default tables and restore default images. Now map tool doesn't come with a lot of images or textures, but it comes with some nice ones that are nice to use. So if you accidentally delete your default folder, this is how you restore it. And then default tables is just some neat little tables that come with map tool that do with like dice images and things like that. So if you want to use those, you hit that and those will pop in there for you. So that was just a quick tutorial uh, overview of where some of the important features and tools are in MapTool. The rest of the tutorials will now get into actually using MapTool.